Salvante Discipuli. Today's video is the first lesson in Chapter 6 in Latin for the New Millennium, Volume 2. And today we're going to learn how to form the comparison of adjectives, meaning that we're going to learn to say, you know, you know, fast, faster, fastest, okay, things like that. Pretty, prettier, prettiest. And then we're also going to learn two ways of expressing comparisons, okay? And you'll see what I mean by that as we go forward in the um, presentation. Okay, so all of the adjectives that you guys have learned so far have been in what's called the positive degree. So brave, silly, happy, small, all of those are positive degree adjectives. Um, there are a total of three degrees, okay? There's positive, comparative, and superlative. The comparative degree in English translates as blanker or more blank, right? So faster or more beautiful, um, clearer, longer, things like that, okay? The superlative degree in English translates as blankest or most blank. So for example, clearest, longest or most beautiful. Uh, Latin adjectives um, can also form the comparative and the superlative degrees, just like English adjectives can. Um, they also have a couple ways that they can translate. So the comparative degree can translate as blanker or more blank, or it can translate as rather whatever. So it can be clearer, it can be rather clear, sometimes even too clear, okay? The superlative can translate blankest or most blank, or it can translate very or extremely blank. So again, using clear as our example, clearest or very clear or extremely clear. Those are all suitable translations for the superlative degree um, of a Latin adjective in English. Okay. So how do we form the comparative and the superlative for a lot now adjectives? Okay, so to form the comparative, you need to get the adjective base, okay? Onto this base, you're gonna add the nominative endings I-O-R for the masculine or feminine, or I-U-S for the neuter. The, de the comparative adjective declines like a third declension with the comparative base being, um, you know, dash, I-O-R, dash. And you'll see um, a declension of this in a couple of, of slides, okay? So we're going to go through a declension. The thing to know about the way that third declension comparative <clears throat> adjectives decline is that they actually could decline more like third declension nouns than they do adjectives. You know, for example, they're not going to have an, a long I in their ablative singular. They're going to have the E that you expect from regular third declension nouns, but we will look at the chart in a couple of slides. So using our example clear, clarus clara clarum, the noun base is clar. So to get the nominative masculine feminine and the nominative neuter, it is clarior clarius. So clarior is how you say a, a clearer man or woman, clarius a clearer thing, okay? So or, you know, rather clear, too clear, something like that. Let me take a note here to um, bring, or let me take a moment here to bring your attention here to this little note at the bottom, which is that it doesn't matter what declension adjective um, these adjectives are in the positive degree. First, second, first, second adjectives, third adjectives, they all form their comparative and the superlative the same way. So here, Clarus, Clara, Clara, this is a first, second declension adjective, but you'll notice that when it becomes comparative, it's going to decline like a third declension, okay? So to form the superlative, you again need the adjective base. You add isimus, isima, isimum to it, and then you decline it like a first, second. So again, it doesn't matter what declension, what declension the, the, the adjective is in the positive degree. So for example, uh, the word for brave, fortis forte, when you make it superlative, it's still going to be fortissimus, fortissima, fortissimum, and it's going to then decline like a first, second declension adjective, okay? I have a, a, an example here on the slide, clarus, clar, clarum. You get the noun base clar, and it becomes clarissimus, clarissima, clarissimum. Um, so clearest, very clear, extremely clear, whatever. Um, I have some more... Um, some more uh, examples for you. So I want you to take a second to pause the video, write out this chart 
at the positive, comparative, and superlative degrees. Write your examples of the positive, longus longa longum, fortis forte, felix felicus, sapiens sapientus, all of these out. And then you get the noun base for, uh, and then add the comparative and the superlative endings on there um, and see how you do. So let's get a little practice with this, okay? So push pause and write this out. I'm not going to wait for it too long because you should be pushing pause and coming back now. So let's take a look at if you got it right. Longus longa longum becomes longior longius. Okay. Longer or rather long. Longissimus longissima gongissimum. Okay. Fortis forte with the um, adjective base fort becomes fortior fortius. The superlative fortimus fortima fortimum. Felix felicus um, becomes felicior felicius. Um, in this comparative, in the superlative, felicimus, uh, felicis, sorry, sorry, felicissimus, felicissima, felicissimum. And then sapien, sapientus becomes sapientor, sapientius in the uh, comparative. And then sapientissimus, sapientissima, sapientissimum in the superlative. Okay. Now I've taken the um, example clarior and I've shown you how this declines. You'll notice here that this is declining like a third declension noun, not adjective. So for example, it isn't clarior, it isn't clariorium, right? You would expect this to have an I. You would expect this to be clarioria. You would expect these to be clariori, clariori, clariori. They're not. This declines like a third uh, noun, more than a third adjective. And again, you should push pause and continue on with this chart. Okay, so that's how you form. The comparison and the, the comparative and the superlative for most adjectives. Now, of course, like all languages, there are a lot of exceptions to this, right? And there is an exception to this for how to form um, some of the adjectives in the comparative and the superlative. And we're going to be learning those over the next couple of chapters, okay? So you are going to learn the exceptions eventually, but this is the regular rule before we learn all the other ways. A couple more things that you need to know. So often when we are using a comparison in English, we um, are using it to compare two things, right? This girl is faster than that boy. There are two ways to be able to express this than in Latin. The first way is to use the um, word quam, okay? And this is where the two things being compared are in the same case as each other. And I have an example here. This book, these books, sorry, are more famous, Claris can also mean famous, than those books. So he, Libri, these books, is in the same case as Ali, those books or those ones, right? Um, so these books are more famous than those books, okay? So you can use qualm and have the two things that are being compared in the same case. Another construction you can use is called the ablative of comparison. And the second noun being uh, compared is put into the ablative case and then you just translate the ablative than whatever. So using the same example as he libri sunt clariores quam illi, we have he libri sunt clariores elis. So instead of quam illi, we use the ablative of comparison, which is also going to translate than those. These books are um, more famous than those. The last thing that you should know is that when you use qualm with a superlative adjective, you translate this, um, the entire phrase, qualm plus the superlative, as blank as possible. So let's look at this um, example. Uxor agricolae erat quam eucundissima. So the farmer's wife was as pleasant as possible. Quam eucundissima. Okay. All right. Take good notes. Um, I'll answer any questions you have in class, and I hope you have a lovely evening. Voilà.